the fine particles, usually the most fertile, have been blown away by the wind. A once eroded field becomes more vulnerable to further erosion. The crops it can grow will be poorer and yield less residue for soil cover, less organic matter to hold the soil particles together, and hence, inevitably, more erosion. But how much erosion can our soils tolerate? Dr. Wayne Lindwall, soil scientist at the Agriculture Canada Research Station in Lethbridge, shares some of his experience and research findings with us. We generally suggested to farmers that if they can see the topsoil loss uh, visually, then it's exceeding the tolerable limit of four to five times is what we've suggested. Uh, obviously, if it becomes excessive, uh, it's much more serious, and uh, to put things in perspective, uh, our best summer follow practices on the prairies, we've generally suggested that we're losing four to five tons per acre with our best summer follow practices. Uh, what that really means is that for every bushel of wheat we're producing on summer follow land, we're losing three to four bushels of soil. Uh, that's at the tolerable limit, so any excessive soil erosion, the losses are much greater. Uh, some of our long-term research at Lethbridge has demonstrated that it takes 25 years to restore the productivity of a soil where we've lost four or five inches of topsoil. Uh, that's many years of intensive cropping and excessive fertilization. What that really means is that it's more than nutrients that we lose with soil loss. It's a structural component. It's an organic component. Uh, obviously, the, the cure and, uh, of soil degradation is much more expensive and much more time-consuming uh, than preventing soil erosion. It is generally agreed among soil scientists that summer fallowing, while it may conserve some moisture, control weeds, and increase fertility in the short term, in the long run, it is ruining the land. To be sure, organic matter is decomposed and nitrogen is released, and that's good for now. But eventually, the soil will lose its fertility and its tilth. In effect, we are mining the soil. The organic matter left by the root and straw of cereal crops does more than provide nutrients. It acts as a kind of cement which binds the soil together in what are called stable soil aggregates. Stable soil aggregates improve the seedbed tilth and reduce erosion. Sandy and clay soils are the most susceptible to erosion. However, given the right or wrong conditions, that is, right for the wind, wrong for the land, almost any soil will blow. We don't need a gale for soil to drift. Even a gentle wind can have that threshold velocity needed to start soil moving in more erodible soils. But there's more to the erosion problem than the soil itself. The way we farm the land bears greatly on its erodibility. Historically, and even today, the practice of summer fallowing, particularly overworking summer fallowing, causes the majority of the damage by wind erosion. Today, machinery presents an opportunity to do an even better job of conservation farming. Unfortunately, because of this new scale of technology, we perhaps unwittingly pulverize the soil by working fields too quickly or too often. We prefer the convenience of large fields with longer passes and fewer interruptions. So does the wind. We need to be constantly reminded of the failings of the past. Some younger farmers are aware of it. In the last few years has been, I'd say, quite serious with for erosion in different areas, of course. I would say a lot of it's mismanagement over summer following. Uh, we've had a few, few years of heavier winds than normal, but it's mainly, I would say, not enough trash cover. Young farmer Laszlo remembers uh, his childhood well. Reminds me of guys I've spoke to, older farmers, that talk about you know, over tillage makes it uh, pulverized and it starts to blow. And Dad always used to tell us when we were kids to, when you're out there summer fall and you're out there doing a the job, you're not out there listening to the radio and daydream. 
you know, look at the soil. If it looks like there's not much trash or if it's going to blow, lift the color out of the ground. You're better off to have a, a few weeds than to have no soil because you're not going to grow anything on it. Eh? Let's get back to the way we farm. For example, weed control is important, but how it's done can influence erosion. Incorporating pre-emergent herbicides can lead to over-cultivation, which pulverizes the soil, leaving it open to serious erosion. Herbicides applied after the crop is up may be the best choice because they don't require any additional cultivation. When fall fertilizing is necessary, soil conservation must be kept in mind. Preparation for fall fertilizing can involve repeated cultivation that will bury protective crop residue. When fall fertilization is desirable, a conservation approach should be used. Prevention of wind erosion, a problem which won't blow away, is best started in the fall. Conservation begins at harvest time with keeping your stubble up. Maintaining a good crop residue cover is the simplest and best way to protect the soil. Crop residues provide an important source of soil organic matter. Spreading the straw as evenly as possible will minimize any problems with later tillage operations. Another tradition which is wrong is burning off the stubble. It is, quite simply, the worst thing you can do. Standing stubble presents the very best protection. Stubble traps snow, too, moisture for the next crop. Snow trapping can be enhanced by using various swather attachments that vary the stubble height 